very beautiful image of the vine, the vineyard, which appears throughout the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, the Psalms, as we heard, and the uh, gospel as well. But a very challenging one also, as we say, all likewise here, uh, to cultivate this vineyard and all the traps we can fall into. Because, uh, well, what is, what, what is the who and what is the vineyard to begin with? Well, the kingdom of God, we just chanted, and that was the way it was originally understood, was the house of Israel, and Isaiah already said, in fact, that passage is quoted by Jesus in the gospel, at first reading, uh, they didn't do such a good job. Yeah, well, okay, but no room for arrogance or complacency or judgment on our part. Because it just gets continued all through history. It applies just as well to the church. You could consider that the vineyard of the Lord, the vineyard of the kingdom of God. And religious leaders, they're the first ones who always seem to fail. Again, just today, Pope Francis opened the Synod on the Family with a rather scathing indictment of religious leaders for their ambition and their lack of concern for their true vocation. That's a pretty strong word to open an assemblage of church leaders. Because it's always a temptation to miss what we should really be doing, be sidetracked by our egos and by all sorts of other things. But of course, the vineyard is more than just a religious group, whichever one. The vineyard is really, well, it's really the whole planet, it's the whole world especially in our global culture today, we should be more and more aware of that. Our call, call of each one of us, not just religious leaders or even leaders, but all of us, to be stewards, to guard and cultivate the vineyard. Because the temptation is always great to mistreat it, as we see in the scriptures. <laughs> as we see all around us, you don't have to have a very clear eye to look around and see the mess that we're making of cultivating the vineyard that's been entrusted to us. Beginning with the environment itself, terrible destruction of the environment all around us, often as the result of political and especially economic, corporate uh, uh, malfeasance, and ambition, without a concern for our organic connection, and much less future generations. Uh, and this is the way leaders also in politics or in government uh, and in business often behave. We've recently, in my opinion, stupidly and dangerously defined corporations as people. Well, I like what some have said, you know, if, if they really are people, they're behaving like psychotics without concern for the real benefit of others and of the ones they're supposed to serve, serve the common good. Not just religious uh, groups, but not just political groups, but economic groups should all be in the service of the common good of the welfare of all people, call it the kingdom of God, which is what it is. Uh, and that's what we should have in mind. And look around the world, all over the place, the ambition of uh, nations and groups and factions and not to mention the worst, in a sense, the worst, because we expect better, uh, the worst uh, behavior on the part of fanatical, fundamentalist, religious groups, not just Muslims, but a bunch of Christians here and elsewhere, uh, Christians uh, who will behave in this way. So if we're going to have peace, if we're going to be able to have the kingdom of God on the global scale that Jesus intended, that Jesus intended, we have to have a real reform of our institutions and of the way we do things to have the common good, what really promotes justice on all levels and peace, pardon and forgiveness and mercy and compassion, uh, all the great values of the gospel and of the Beatitudes that we don't talk enough about because it's too simple and it's too hard. But that's what we're called to. So how do we do it? Well, that's the other dimension of the vine. Who is the vine? Jesus says elsewhere in the Gospel, a beautiful passage, John 15, he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. 
We are the branches of the vine, and we're called to remain, as he says in that parable, if you read it, connected to the vine. Otherwise, we cause havoc. We can't do anything, as he says, nothing good, uh, without that connection to the vine, the sap of the spirit, the sap of the energy of God's life within us uh, to bring about the true growth of the vine, our own true growth. And in order for us to evade, elude, uh, avoid all of these traps of the ego and, uh, that we so easily fall into on all sorts of levels, economic, social, and religious, and psychological, above all, maybe, we need to cultivate this vine. We need to cultivate our own inner life. This is what really imposes itself for the survival of the planet, for our own survival and growth and for peace among religions. Karl Rahner, the great Jesuit theologian of the last century, said that the 21st century will be mystical or it won't be at all. And we're running down that course pretty quickly. So in other words, in order for this larger vine to be cultivated properly, we need to cultivate this, the, mac the microcosm in order for the macrocosm to flourish. We need to go deep within ourselves to unmask and dethrone and unveil the tricks of the ego, uh, the illusions of our isolated self, fearful and clamoring and clinging, trying to get the most out of everything, little pleasures and, the, the, you know, feathering our own nest at the expense of everybody else, our own culture, our own group, our own religion. All of that stuff is ego. It's not standing up for truth or patriotism, it's standing up for the ego in those forms when it's adverse, when it's contrary to others' rights, to others' dignity, uh, and to others' growth, to the common good which we all share. And it's precisely contemplation, this deep uh, cultivation of our inner world, this deep prayer, which all the mystics of all the traditions, including our own, call contemplation. It is only at that price, and by doing that, we would be able to have the clarity of vision, first of all, unmasking the ego, and then the power and the energy and the enthusiasm, experiencing God, experiencing our connectedness to all, uh, in the body of Christ, as we would say, uh, that we will be able to uh, take on, shoulder this great task of cultivating the vineyard and making it flourish, the whole planet flourish. We have to be flourishing here first in order to see clearly, as I say, what's called for, and then also to be able to do that. So when we read about, you know, the vineyard and the vine and the people who aren't faithful in cultivating it, don't look around to see whom you can judge. Look inside and find whom you, what you need to judge. And by the power of that sap of the spirit within us as we're attached to the vine of Christ, let's be able to, following the inspirations of the spirit, realize our connectedness in the body of Christ to Christ himself, to the body of Christ, our brothers and sisters across the face of the earth, and to the whole universe, which in the end is the resurrected body of Christ. It's all connected. But we won't even see that, much less be able to effect it, unless we're, unless we're affected by the spirit of Christ within us, doing our deep interior work that we need to do. So let's not shrink from that. It's for our own happiness and for the survival of us all.